Hey guys, Adrian Green here. And today I wanted to talk to you about appraisals because they have come up in a big way this week. So I'm going to start with kind of an overview of um, how an appraisal is a part of your offer. And then we'll get into some specific examples this week and how if you are looking to buy a place, you can use this knowledge to help make a winning offer. So first, how does an appraisal come into play when you're buying a house? Well, the if you're getting a loan is where we're really concerned about that. And most of my clients are getting a conventional investment mortgage loan, you know, where they're putting 20 or 25% down on their properties. Okay. So in that situation, let's say you're going to buy a place for X amount of dollars and your loan is going to be on X amount of dollars. You're going to put 20% down of X amount of dollars. The bank gets an appraisal that you pay for to confirm that that house is worth X amount of dollars. And the issues come up if the appraisal is under that amount of X amount of dollars. And there are some properties, so the, the way that an appraisal comes up with the, the value of a house is the appraiser has to use comparable sales. And there are rules about what an appraiser can use for comparable sales. Um, they have to use, unless there's an exception, they have to use properties that have closed within a certain time period usually uh, usually I think they're going for 90 days you know something that's closed in the last 90 days you know close to the house similar in terms of bedrooms bathrooms square footage condition and it doesn't have to be the exact same they adjust for differences but they want to find sales that are comparable right that are in the same realm where they can be compared and whenever we have a property where there may not be at least three comparable sales in the area we are at a higher risk of appraisal issues so specifically in the chattanooga area at least multifamilies can come up with that uh, an appraisal on a multifamily is less of a sure thing because as in most markets there are less multifamilies that are sold than there are single family homes so um, you know if you're buying a duplex or a triplex you might want to really pay attention to the tips i'm going to share here at the end telling you what we do to lessen the risk of any appraisal issues. Also split levels or houses like that where the above ground square footage is uh, less than it would be on a house that wasn't a split level. Uh, those tend to have a higher risk of appraisal issues. Uh, anything that's atypical. Um, so anything where we're not seeing a whole lot of similar houses right around it. Anything that's really updated, so it's at the high end of the comparable sales, they're more likely to have an appraisal issue versus something that's not in great shape. And so that's kind of my overview of like things that sometimes can be a red flag. And I will say though, you know, I've had three low appraisals this year uh, on prop on deals. So they are happening. And part of the reason is for any house that it is an issue is appraisals are always looking in reverse. They're looking at sold places, right? They can't consider anything that's under contract unless they get an exception. So they're looking in reverse and our market is going like this pretty quickly, right? And so they can't always justify that this sold for 95,000 a month ago, but in today's market, a similar house is worth 105,000 now. You know, you figure that $95,000 house that closed a month ago, it really went under contract a month before that. And in two months, we can see significant difference in the market value of a house. And so that's where, you know, appraisals can be an issue on, on any house. So, and then what happens if it's low? Let's say you're under contract on that house at 100,000 and it appraises at 95,000. The buyer and the seller negotiate either lowering the purchase price to that 95,000 or meeting somewhere in the middle with the buyer paying that difference in cash. That's usually how it works. Where we end up depends on uh, the demand on the house, depends on if they had other cash offers or other offers in general, uh, depends on how big that gap is between the appraisal and the purchase price. So there's no one rule on what happens, but that's generally where we're going to end up is somewhere between the original, the, the excuse me, the the appraised value and the original purchase price. Okay. Uh, if we don't come to terms, then the cancel, then the uh, contract can be canceled and the house put back on the market. The buyer goes back, goes and looks that can happen. So what do we do to try and prevent those issues? And if you're a buyer, make your offer strong to the seller and make it more attractive. Well, I actually, one thing we do 
the, the most aggressive thing you can do is you can take away an appraisal contingency on a contract. You can say, I don't care what the house appraises for, I'm gonna buy it for X amount of dollars and it, whatever it appraises for, I'm gonna pay the difference in cash. You can do that, all right? You can, now most people don't wanna do that because they have no idea what it's gonna appraise for. I can tell you that most of the time it does appraise close to the purchase price, but there's no guarantee, right? So what most people do is what we call an appraisal cushion. And they say, I will pay up to some amount of dollars over the appraisal if the appraisal is low. So uh, I just had a client do this and they actually won the, the house over other higher priced offers. So I wanted to kind of tell you those specifics here. This house um, was listed uh, in the 80s and my client came in with an offer with an escalation clause up to 97, 5, 97,500 with a $3,500 appraisal cushion. So he said he would pay up to 3,500 over the appraised value. That house also got two other offers for $100,000, but they did not have that same appraisal cushion. So the seller decided to go with my client's offer because they knew that that was more of a sure thing. It took away some risk for them and it made it more of a sure thing that we'll get to the closing table and that they will get that 97.5 versus the $100,000 offers. You know, if it appraises at 95,000, then the $100,000 offers would likely go down to 95. If it appraises at 95 with my client's offer, that seller still knows they're getting 97.5, no issues. So that appraisal cushion is something that we do a lot to make an offer stronger in today's market. Now, what amount that should be, it depends a little bit on, um, of course, the buyer's comfort level, and then of course the purchase price. So in this situation with a house under 100,000, you know, a $3,500 appraisal cushion is pretty generous as a percentage of the purchase price. When we get over 100,000, you know, we may look at a $5,000 appraisal cushion. Um, you know, as you get successively higher, maybe up to a $10,000 appraisal cushion. I am seeing houses in the 200,000s and up in very desirable neighborhoods sell for possibly 20,000 more than I think they would appraise for, maybe more than that. So we are seeing people get pretty generous with what they're willing to pay over appraisal um, just to get the house. I will note we're seeing that in people really looking for primary residences, right? For somebody who's looking for an investment property, it's hard to justify paying that much over the appraised value um, so, but I do want people to think about this and think about, you know, even a $5,000 appraisal cushion and something between a hundred and $200,000 can make a big difference in getting your offer accepted. So that's kind of what I wanted to share with you guys today that what appraisals are, how they have issues and to kind of, you know, what will happen if it's low. And then finally to say how we consider that and make our offer stronger, potentially against even higher priced offers. So um, consider you know, putting in that appraisal cushion. And if you'd like to learn more or you're interested in buying houses in the Chattanooga area, please reach out to me and you know, all my contact information is here. And if you're watching this on YouTube and this was helpful, please thumbs up the video and subscribe to my channel. Try to put out a few things a week that are helpful for people buying real estate. Thank you so much and have a great day.